Good afternoon. Before we begin the celebration of the Mass, I invite you to bow your heads while I pray the vocation's prayer for our graduates. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O dearest Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, and of Mary Immaculate, grant to our boys and girls the generosity necessary to follow your call and the courage to overcome all obstacles to their discernment of the acceptance of their vocations. Give to parents the faith, love, and spirit of sacrifice that will inspire them to encourage their children to give their life in God's service and to cause them to rejoice exceedingly whenever one of their children is called to holy orders or the religious life. Let your example and that of your mother and Saint Joseph encourage both children and parents and let your graces sustain them for you are the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as we gather in celebration of St. Andrew's graduating class of the year of our Lord, 2020, we give thanks for the blessing that each of them has been and will be, not only to their families, to their school, to this community, and well beyond, but all the blessings they will bestow through the wisdom that has been given them to make the world a more welcoming place for the Holy Spirit, for the name of Jesus to be praised, for the Father to be glorified. We do so as citizens of the kingdom of Christ seeking his pardon and peace as we acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. pray. O oh God, hear our prayers so that what was promised by the sanctifying power of your word may everywhere be accomplished through the working of the gospel and that all your adopted children may attain what the testimony of truth has foretold. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night, while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid, go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews, If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should, with reason, hear the complaint of the Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal but none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At century, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Nothing. 
beside restful waters he leads me he refreshes my soul the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want he guides me in right paths for his name's sake dark valley I fear no evil for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want you spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. On behalf of Father Christopher and Father Nathan and myself, Thank you for the honor of being with you on this graduation day and to celebrate this part of your lives in, through, with, and for Jesus the Christ. The readings of the day may not seem particularly appropriate, and yet they are. They speak of a hostile world, a hostile environment, 
a challenging, well, gift of faith, and that that gift may even require some to take a pledge and shave their heads. <laughs> Not all, only the chosen ones. And that's a good thing because not all of us, none of us are in a cookie cutter, are we? Each of us, each of you as graduates are called to live and move and have your being in the Lord Jesus according to the gifts and graces the Lord has bestowed upon you so that that which may be of grief at some point in your life may be turned into joy because in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, in times of sorrow or celebration, you find yourself not alone, but accompanied by our Savior who wishes to go before you, to lead you, be beside you, to comfort and instruct you, above you to bless you, behind you to guard you, and be the most welcome guest in the recesses of your hearts and minds and souls. It's an ancient Irish blessing that I'm paraphrasing, but it's always good to bring a taste of Ireland beyond the Emerald Isle auction and even into this holy liturgy. We live in a curious time. Stay in place. Mask your face. Purify your hands. Pragmatic, practical, purposeful, so that others will not be endangered. It's reasonable but it cannot be the image of our lives in Christ. We cannot stay in place. Even the very Mass itself is a commissioning to go forth into the world, not carelessly, not recklessly, not self-righteously, but in the vein of sacrificial love in which we find ourselves and our hearts pulsate with that love of Christ within us, and there is a strong and even urgent need to share that sacrificial love for a waiting world. Don't just be who you are for the rest of your lives. Become all you are called to be through grace, through grace. Don't be an anonymous Christian. Unmask yourself in Christ. Don't be timid or afraid, for you behold God in others by seeing them face to face. It may be the face of a stranger or even an enemy or one once beloved but no longer, or one that you long to see, one who fulfills your life, all of them, even you, even me, we are children of God, made in God's image and likeness. We cannot hide the face of God from the world. We bring God with us. We become his face. Our words are meant to be his words, our hands his hands. And while it is good to take care that they are cleaned and purified as they are ritually in mass, Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. It is not the hand alone that must be purified, but first, foremost, and always the soul. And how, Lord, I am a sinner, forgive me. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, I wish to follow you, show me the way. Lord, I love you, 
help me to love you more completely. Those are honest expressions of a heart that needs to be purified so that humble and contrite, it may welcome with joy, even in times of grief or confusion or fear or doubt, welcome with joy the presence of Jesus and then become that presence to the world. What a great gift you are this day to have the courage of your faith to gather. Are you perfect? I won't ask your parents the answer to that question. Are you good? Absolutely. You're made in God's image and likeness, goodness and light. Can you, can I be better? Absolutely, we must. Should we seek to be at our best? You bet. Will we make it? Sometimes, but not all the time. And when we need to have mercy once again to remind us of the goodness, let us turn to him and thank him and ask for his forgiveness and forgive as we have been forgiven so that nothing or no one is lost to him. God bless your journey. God bless you as you reveal Christ to the world. God bless the labor of your hands in the building of his kingdom. And God bless you for the true gift that you are and all that you will come to be. Through Christ our risen Lord, amen. Let us stand together in prayer. Dear sisters and brothers, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that the Lord who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our need. For the class of 2020, that we grow to know ourselves and Christ better in the coming years, and that we may discern our vocations well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parents who have worked so hard to raise us well and prepared us to go out into the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost loved ones and all who are suffering because of the coronavirus pandemic, and for doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers during this difficult time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Andrew's School, that it may continue to flourish and teach the gospel of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, that God's love and grace may keep them safe, and for the protection of all life, from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who cannot be present with us here today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Ian Curtis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of all who believe in you. Through Christ our risen Lord, amen. Please join in singing the refrain from Now We Remain, which can be found in your program.
Let us stand together in prayer. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand together in prayer. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join.
just as eight men are in the desert. But this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Hello, everyone. On behalf of our board, faculty, and staff, Welcome to the 2020 graduation ceremony of St. Andrew's School. We offer our sincere gratitude to Bishop Better, Monsignor O'Neill, Michael Vreberg, all of the servers, Jason Phillips and Ms. Rodriguez, Fathers Scheidecker and Lebsock for joining us, and Dan Bartelson and his staff for live streaming this celebration for those who were unable to attend and all who have welcomed us into this beautiful cathedral for our celebration. This has definitely been an interesting year, to say the least, with the many ups and downs, new beginnings, and then COVID hit. 2020 will definitely last long into our memory. Through all of this, though, we have stayed close to our Lord. He has given us the fortitude to come through and to have hope. We are an Easter people, and we believe in the resurrection of our Savior. We want to thank you all for taking the time to participate in this joyous occasion and for sharing your amazing students with us. These seniors, Many who began their lives in the year of 9-11 and now graduate during a pandemic are destined to make significant changes in our world. They have each grown to be outstanding individuals and we are very proud of them. It has been my distinct pleasure to have been a small part of their lives and to have seen them grow throughout the years. As you will hear later, this class has persevered and come out stronger for it. Thank you for joining us today and through your presence and your prayers. And Briar Bell, now one of our valedictorians, will come up and give the 2020 class address. Briar. Dear graduates, parents, friends, family, faculty, and cathedral staff, normally this speech begins with a thank you for attending and putting together this event, 
and that is more important this year than ever before. As has been said in countless emails, webinars, and digital meetings, this is an unprecedented time. The graduates of 2020 have had many traditions, formalities, and events taken from us. It truly is a blessing that we are able to be here today for a small bit of celebration. So let me be the first to say thank you to those who put this together, to those here to support the graduates, and to the cathedral staff for allowing us to have this event in the most beautiful place in Helena, if not Montana. I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Bartleson for his work filming this today for those that could not be here with us today. We would like to say thank you to our parents. Your tireless devotion to us and support of us is truly something we will never be able to repay. We are here today because of you, and we know that you have raised us with everything we need to be successful and be disciples of Christ. For as long as I can remember, the seniors have sung Non Nobis Domine at their graduation, and we've done the same. This has been so deeply ingrained in this event that I can't imagine it any other way. As this event drew nearer, I found myself thinking about the song. It translates to, not to us, Lord, but to your name give glory. And I don't think there is a more fitting song for celebration, for graduation. On this day that was made to celebrate our accomplishments, it is vital to remember God's role in that, not to discredit our hard work, but to acknowledge God's role within it. He was there for every paper we wrote, for every problem we solved, for every presentation we gave, because he wouldn't miss it for the world. He was at every test helping us remember what we had studied, or maybe laughing at us for trying to cram five minutes before class. God was there with us every step of the way, and for that we thank him today and every day as he continues to walk with us into the unknown. I asked my class to describe St. Andrews in one word. Every single one said something about community or family. This truly is a unique aspect of St. Andrews. These halls have practically raised us as we've walked through them all these years. Though only three of us came in kindergarten, we still have all grown up together. With the small classes, we've been able to make real relationships with each other and with our teachers. That is not something that most schools have. Our teachers have invested their entire selves into instilling knowledge into each of us. The school is also home to a faith community. We have grown up steeped in the faith, and this has enabled us to sp think spiritually in an everyday way. This has been helped by the hard work of Monsignor O'Neill, Father Lebsock, Father Scheidecker, and Father Tollison. Thank you for celebrating Masses at the school and coming into our classrooms to share your knowledge with us. We will leave this school having learned so much about the faith both intellectually in the classroom and in action among our peers and teachers. Thank you to St. Andrew for fostering this community, and thank you to the many teachers that have worked day and night over the years, especially during this strange online semester, to give us our education. The motto our class chose is vita non est vivere, sed vivere bona vita est. Now, you all just instantly translated that in your head, so I don't think I have to. But, for formality's sake, it means life is not about living, but about living a good life. This sounds like a great quote to embroider, frame, and put on your wall somewhere, but what does it mean, and how does it apply to the class of 2020? To me, this motto means that our lives are not meant to be drudged through, going from one action to the next, simply getting through our days and eventually our lives as quickly, easily, and painlessly as possible. We must live good lives in every meaning of the word, we must live kindly, courageously, faithfully, patiently, thankfully. We must do meaningful things, whether that be teaching high school kids history, serving our country in the military, selling houses to families, creating works of art, or spreading the faith. Living a good life is something everyone does differently, but it is something everyone has to do. But we're young. We're only just graduating high school and heading off into the rest of our lives. We only have around 18 years of living experience, and that's really not a lot, so how can we know how to live good lives? But the truth is, we've been learning this whole time. We've watched our parents nurture families and love, learned what it is to be a friend, realized what it is to be a team player. We've volunteered to help our community, seen what it is to have a strong faith, and started figuring out where our passions lie. Through our friends, parents, siblings, teachers, and community, through the good and through the bad, we've started to learn what a good life could be. Now it's up to us to go out and live one.
Thank you, Briar. That was really well done. Okay, now comes the time that we're going to confer the diplomas and tell you a little bit about these graduates. These graduates are receiving their diplomas, awards, and a yearbook when they come up to the podium. Once all the graduates have received their diplomas, we will finish our service with the Litany of the Saints and a final blessing from Monsignor O'Neill. The graduates will walk out after the cross and the clergy and gather together on the front steps for pictures. Eric Connolly has graciously offered to take pictures of the graduates and their families and make them available to you. As difficult as it is, please be conscious of the social distancing regulations when you gather together outside. We do not want to cause any issues for our dear cathedral members and staff. I will say thank you again now to all of you for coming together and for watching from afar, and I wish you the very best in the days to come. And now, our graduates. Christian David Amon. Christian started attending St. Andrew in the second grade. His favorite class has been history with Mr. Nelson, although he thinks Mr. Cavelli is pretty cool, too. Christian will go to Ave Maria University to study business administration and maybe follow in his father's footsteps and get his realtor's license. Christian's favorite saint is St. Thomas Aquinas. His favorite memory of, in St. Andrew was the Salt and Light Retreat at Legendary Lodge. He would like to thank the teachers and his family for being there for him through thick and thin. Christian is receiving an award for outstanding service, and he was voted the most willing to try anything. Congratulations, Christian, and God bless you. Morgan Robert Amon. Morgan Amon started St. Andrew in the second grade as well. It makes sense because he is Christian's twin brother. Morgan's favorite class was PE, and I wonder if I had something to do with that. His most memorable moment was when Levi asked him to sit by him in class and the Salt and Light Retreat. Morgan will miss the small class size and the one-on-one -on -one instruction. His favorite saint is Saint Pope John Paul II. He will need his guidance as he goes to the holy city of Butte to detect this fall to study construction technology. Morgan also received an award for outstanding service and was voted to have the best entrepreneurial spirit. Congratulations, Morgan. Briar Catherine Bell. <laughs> Briar started St. Andrew in kindergarten. Her favorite class was Moral Theology with Mr. Hall. Briar's favorite memory of St. Andrew was the Salt and Light Retreat at Legendary Lodge. Briar will miss walking the halls of the school and remembering her many years there. Briar will attend St. Olaf College and major in art history or vocal performance. Her favorite saint is St. Francis de Sales, who believed that all people could be holy. She thinks, thanks her family for being there for her always. Briar was a finalist for the National Merit Scholarship and is a valedictorian at St. Andrew's School. She was voted the one who would most likely travel the world. Congratulations, Briar. Elizabeth Ann Clark. <laughs> Elizabeth also started at St. Andrew in kindergarten. Her favorite class was history with Mr. Nelson. She loved being part of the volleyball team and playing any sport they could come up with during lunch. She will miss the friends and families she has known at St. Andrew's. This fall, Elizabeth will attend Carroll College and double major 
in Social Studies Secondary Education and Catholic Studies. Her favorite saint is Saint Pope John Paul II. Elizabeth thanks her parents for encouraging her to try her hardest in her faith and academics. Elizabeth will graduate with honors and is voted to have the best smile. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Miriam Catherine Dixon. <laughs> Miriam started at St. Andrew in the seventh grade. Her favorite class was chemistry, and her best memory is sitting by the lake at Legendary Lodge. She will miss hanging out with her friend Elena. This fall, Miriam will attend Montana State University, go cats, and study finance. Her favorite saint is St. Christopher, the patron saint of travelers. Miriam would like to thank her parents for giving her all the opportunities she has had in her life. She has achieved the distinction of being a valedictorian at St. Andrew's School and was voted the most conscientious person who strives to do her best. Congratulations, Miriam. Joseph Patrick Hurlbert. <laughs> Joseph came to St. Andrew in the first grade. His favorite class was art with Mr. Tavery. His most memorable time was playing games of crazy ball as a class or asking Mr. Hall questions about the meaning of life. Joseph will miss the school ski days even though the last one set him back just a little bit. And learning such a, at such a great school, Joseph plans to go to Franciscan University in Steubenville and play on their baseball team. We're looking forward to watching him in the pros. His favorite saint is St. Augustine. Joseph would like to thank his parents for providing him the opportunity to receive such a great education, education at St. Andrew's School and for giving him everything he needs to be successful, but more importantly, to be a disciple of Christ. Joseph is a valedictorian, has received an award for outstanding service, and of course was voted to have the best hair at St. Andrew's School. Congratulations, Joseph. <laughs> Dominic Thomas Lozano. Dominic started at St. Andrew just three years ago as a sophomore. Mr. Nelson's history class was his favorite and his most memorable event. It was one time all the fake plants that were moved into the boys' bathroom to resemble a jungle. We don't know who did that. Dominic enjoys playing his guitar and is a band that he hopes to play more with when he goes to Benedictine College. His favorite saint is St. Philip Neri which is apropos since Dominic was voted to have the best sense of humor, just like St. Philip did. Congratulations, Dominic. <laughs> Gabrielle Elizabeth Nistler. <laughs> Gabby started at St. Andrew in kindergarten her favorite class was history with Mr. Nelson. There seems to be a theme here. She remembers most, lear remembers most learning to dance with Mr. Pettish and helping in the kindergarten room with Mrs. Almond. She will miss the great community and being able to be around the younger students. Gabby will attend the University of Mary and major in elementary education and Catholic studies. Sounds like a future St. Andrew teacher to me. Gabby's favorite saint is St. Therese of Lisieux because she was able to love others in little ways. Gabby says through St. Therese's intercession, many of her prayers have been answered. She would like to thank her parents for sending her to St. Andrew's School, even though at times she grumbled about that decision. Gabby is graduating with honors and was voted the best baker at the school. Congratulations, Gabby.
Garrett Allen Olson. Garrett began St. Andrew in the fifth grade. His favorite class throughout the years has been history. His most memorable time with Mr. Graney, conducting strenuous PE classes he called fitness days. Garrett will miss the close community at the school and the World Cup and volleyball games he played at lunch. Garrett's plan is to attend Carroll College and study civil engineering. He will serve his country by taking part in the Army ROTC program there and eventually become an officer. Thank you for choosing to serve your, in the military in your country. Garrett's favorite saint is St. Michael the Archangel. He would like to thank his parents for pushing him to his full potential no matter what and showing him the value of a good work ethic. Evidently, Garrett knows, Garrett knows how to solve problems and was voted the best problem solver in the senior class. Congratulations, Garrett. <laughs> Samuel Dale Schoengert. <laughs> Sam started attending St. Andrew as a freshman. His favorite classes have been Latin and art with Mrs. Patton. His favorite memory was his first yo-yo performance at the talent show. Sam will miss the awesome friends he has made at St. Andrew. He plans to go to Montana State, go cats, and study marketing and photography. He would like to eventually own his own business. Sam's favorite saint is St. Anthony of Padua. He would like to thank his parents for preparing and teaching him to be the best he can be as a person and as a Catholic. He is grateful for the great memories he has created with them and for ultimately giving him the best childhood he could have ever asked for. Sam was voted to have the best shoes at the school, and he was given the only Griffin Spirit Award for being kind, caring, and helpful to all ages of students at St. Andrew. Congratulations, Sam. Elena Grace Smith. <laughs> Elena came to St. Andrew at the end of her freshman year. Her overall favorite class has been art, with good reason. She is a beautiful and talented artist. Elena's favorite memories at school are meeting her best friends, especially goofing off with Miriam. Elena is planning to take a gap year and work full time. She aspires to go to college and study graphic design. Elena's favorite saint is Saint Gertrude of Nivelles. She would like to thank her parents for supporting her throughout these past years and for their unconditional love. Elena was voted, you guessed it, the most artistic. Congratulations, Elena. Kelsey Lee Walker. Kelsey started St. Andrew's School in the fourth grade. The favorite class she took was British literature. She has had many fun times at St. Andrew's that include the service week as well as the volleyball season. She will miss the positive attitudes from all the teachers and the staff every day. Kelsey plans to attend Carroll College in the fall. President Sec will be excited about that. Her favorite saint is St. Genevieve because her faith as a child is an inspiration to children all over the world. Kelsey would like to thank her parents for giving her the option of going to St. Andrews and for helping her through school all these years. Kelsey was voted most likely to star in the next high school musical. Congratulations, Kelsey. <laughs> if they all can stand up for our graduates, please. Graduates, just the graduates, stand up and we'll welcome them.
Congratulations. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you so much for coming here today for this time to be together with these wonderful young students. It's exciting to see and think about where they might go in the next 10 to 20 to 30 years. St. John Paul II was one of their favorite saints that crossed the board, and he has written a meditation that I'd like to finish with, with you. Christ is the Good Shepherd. He calls his sheep by name and leads them forth. We, his flock, know his voice, and we share his concern to gather his people together, to lead them on the way of salvation. Let yourselves be summoned by the love of Christ, Recognize his voice which rings in the temple of your heart. Receive his luminous and penetrating glance which opens the paths of your lives upon horizons of the mission of the church. Today, more than ever, to teaching us his true being, his end, his destiny, and to revealing to faithful souls the unspeakable riches of the love of Christ. Have no fear of the fact that the response he requires is radical. Because Jesus, who has first loved you, is ready to give what he asks of you. If he asks too much, it is because he knows that you can give much. Young people, give the church a hand in the task of saving the world of youth. React against the culture of death by means of the culture of life. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of our souls, you who know your sheep and know how to reach their hearts, open the minds and hearts of those who search for and await a word of truth for their lives. Let them understand that only in the mystery of your incarnation do they find full light. Arouse the courage of those who know where to seek the truth, but fear that what you ask will be too demanding. Stir the heart of those who would follow you, but who cannot overcome the doubts and the fears, and who in the end would follow other voices and other paths which lead nowhere. You who are the word of the Father, the word which creates and saves, the word which enlightens and sustains hearts, conquer with your spirit the resistance and delays of indecisive hearts. Arouse in those whom you call the courage of love's answer, who say from Isaiah, Here I am, send me. Virgin Mary, young daughter of Israel, support your, with your motherly love those whom the Father will grant that they hear his voice. Let them repeat with you the yes of a joyful and irrevocable gift of self. St. John Paul II. Thank you so much. And now Briar Bell is going to sing the litany of the saints, and then we will have a final blessing, and we'll be done.
orchard of Novello, pray for us. Saint Francis of Assisi, pray for us. O holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Well done, and well done to all the seniors, to the faculty. Paul Hurlbert, thank you for the school board and all your many efforts, to the staff as well as to the faculty. And Gigi, thank you especially this day for not only all that you have organized to make this a day to be glad and rejoice in, but for coming and becoming what God has called you to be, the principal of St. Andrews. Thank you very, very much. And now I just have 30 or 40 minutes more of gratitude to express, but I'll keep it to myself and say instead, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, O God Beyond All Praising, which can be found in your programs. Oh.